I'm Steve Zenzel, Funeral Director at the Layman Zenzel Funeral Home here in Salina, Ohio. How much money do you make in a year? My salary is based off of a couple different factors. I have an income that I make from the funeral home itself as a funeral director, roughly around $50,000. And then I have additional income, uh, monument sales from the commissions on that on the other side. What are the hours of a funeral home director? That's a good question. That's one of the big things as a funeral director, you're not really set to a nine to five job. Uh, as a funeral director, we have a 24 hour a day business from the standpoint of you never know when somebody's gonna pass away. So uh, where that makes that interesting is some days you may have a lot to do, other days you may not have anything to do. Just like when you take, for example, a visitation. You might work until nine o'clock that particular night, turn around and get back up in the morning and start off early for your funeral and your day may end at five or it may start all over again with another funeral or a visitation even that evening. So you're not really set, but you're always kind of on call. What are the benefits of this job? The benefits of this job aren't really monetary. Uh, the greatest benefit that you see from being a funeral director is when you can appreciate the what you do and how you help families that are grieving or have lost a loved one. And once you see that end of it from a family standpoint, even like myself who has been on the other side as a family grieving, when you see the benefits of the funeral, then you can appreciate what you do. Uh, aside from money, that is probably the biggest benefit in what you do and how you're helping people. What are the qualifications of this career? To be a funeral director in the state of Ohio, you have to have a bachelor's degree. It doesn't necessarily have to be in mortuary science, but you have to have a bachelor's degree of education, and then you have to become uh, a licensed uh, undertaker or mortician, funeral director and embalmer in the state of Ohio. So you have a little bit more schooling that's specialized more towards being a funeral director. You uh, take that schooling or education through an accredited mortuary school, and then you have to serve an apprenticeship for a year in the state of Ohio so that you can sit on your boards, take your boards test. Once you pass your boards test, you can uh, have that apprenticeship for that period and then take your funeral director's test after that year. What are the interests should you have in this job? What other interest? What interest should you have? What interest should I have? Or should someone should, who's going into yeah. this have? Uh, interest that somebody should have is they should be uh, interested in caring for people uh, from the utmost standpoint of you are taking care of their loved one. Uh, as far as interest, you should like the science side, the math side of education because that is where a lot of the understanding of how embalming works and that arts comes into play a little bit also with your restorative arts and making somebody look good um, from the standpoint of feature setting and all of that before you embalm. Uh, that science side and the help of understanding chemicals comes into play with that embalming procedure a little bit, uh, but more so has to do with setting those features and having somebody look good from that standpoint. But you basically have to be a people person. You have to be able to talk to people and get along with people so that you can help them through this process of grief that we're talking about as far as a funeral itself. What does the job entail? The job entails there's separate aspects of it uh, from the standpoint of being a funeral director. Uh, you know, you have your outside personal skills when you make your removals from facilities or homes where you're picking up someone's loved one. And then you also have the people skills when you're, uh, when you're meeting with family members and you're selling merchandise as far as caskets and bolts and, and urns that go into those service arrangements. Um, 
but from the standpoint of the job, you also have that time in between where you're embalming somebody and you have to have that experience and hands on there. It's not a, it's not a nine to five job sitting in an office. So it entails a lot of stuff that's outside of the office, but then also comes back to that and your service and your people uh, orientation with them and your people skills to interact with people from the standpoint of having a visitation and greeting and meeting people and helping them out with what they need while they are here too, not only visiting, but also your family from that standpoint. What is a normal day as a funeral director? A normal day as a funeral director, uh, you can't really base it as nine to five. Uh, you know, let me use this morning for example. I mean, my day started at 7.30. Someone from a uh, past service that we had called and had a couple questions and I took care of that before I even came into the office uh, from that standpoint. But uh, then, you know, I put, a, I put my time in here at the office, get my paperwork done. Uh, anything that needs to be done in the preparation room will be done before noon because you're going to have a family coming to the funeral home at 1 uh, for visitation. And then you're done, like I said before, you're done about 9 o'clock at night and you turn around and you're back up for the funeral the next day. Uh, that's a normal day in the process of having a funeral. On the days that you don't necessarily have funerals, you still have paperwork to catch up on with death certificates that you're filing and your permits that you're chasing down so that you can have those services. Uh, death certificates entail getting a, a document to the doctor so that he can sign it and then getting it to the health department. Uh, you do a little bit of running around uh, from that standpoint. So you're not just, like I said before, not just stuck to that nine to five in the office or behind a machine or doing that particular uh, entity that you do inside a normal career. Is there any options for promotion in this job? Uh, greatest promotion in the job of being a funeral director is to work your way up to the ranks and then someday eventually own your own funeral home and be your own boss, uh, have your own funeral home that you run. What's the highest level you can achieve? The highest level would probably be uh, if you're just talking about the funeral home itself, the highest level that you'd be would be an owner of your own funeral home or funeral homes, whatever the establishments may be that you have or make an arrangement for. Um, as far as inside the industry itself, you can What advice would you give someone pursuing this career? The greatest advice I could give somebody who was wanting to pursue the career of being a funeral director would be at the earliest point that you could in your career to get involved at a funeral home to kind of experience it before you actually go into the field of it, which normally, you know, people want to get their education out of the way and then going to jump right into something. But I think you should get into the industry itself, work at the funeral home, like Jack Henders, for example, who worked here last year. He wants to be a doctor, but he had worked here and it was a great experience for him to kind of see what happens at a funeral home and what goes on from that standpoint before you take the leap and get your bachelor's degree and put all that time into the education. Like I said before, the big factor is the time. The time commitment to this type of career is the greatest thing unless you're in a large inner city and you're working at a corporate office. Uh, that's going to have more of a structured entity of nine to five or you'll have some schedule that you follow or you may just be an embalmer uh, instead of being an entire funeral director or like a, uh, a family-owned funeral home where, where you do a little bit of everything. Uh, you may just be an embalmer in the big city uh, from that standpoint. But get that experience. Get as much experience as you can about what you want to do before you just jump right into it. How long is schooling? 
Well, it goes back to you have to have a bachelor's degree. Let me use myself, for example. <clears throat> I took two years of general education after high school, and then I went to the Cincinnati College of Mortuary Science in Cincinnati. And at that particular school, you go straight through for a year and a half after you have your two years of general education, and they specialize in teaching you how to embalm and the craft of being a mortician from the standpoint of uh, the funeral directing side and the uh, restorative nature side of it, the art side of the industry. But it's, it is it is a four-year degree from that standpoint. Uh, I have a master's, I'm sorry, a bachelor's in mortuary science. And if you would get your bachelor's first in something else, then you would go to school for a year just getting the skills to be a funeral director in the state of Ohio and learning what it takes to pass the boards. All right, thank you. You're welcome.